Different words describe different people. But in the eyes of the law, there's one that fits us all. Human right number seven. We're all equal before the law. What are human rights? Find out at youthforhumanrights.org. I'm Sonia. I'm Kate. And I'm Abong. We're dishing with you from the new Ping Pong Dim Sum located at 907th Street Northwest. And I am really enjoying, now I, I want to get this right so they gave me a post-it note. Lemongrass and lime cocktail with Jewel of Russia vodka. Yummy. Whoa. That took 15 minutes to say. I know, that's why they gave me this little card. <laughs> well, they, these saying, are going to be gone in 15 minutes. Now your so. intro Abong is much easier, so you go ahead. <laughs> oh! Our guest, our guest, yeah. our guest don't forget me, is Adam, Adam Clampett, who's a D.C. native and uh, former candidate for D.C. Council. Yes. And you, you've, how long have you been in D.C. recently? Uh, I came back from Afghanistan about seven days ago. Oh, my seven gosh. Seven days ago. Yes. But Although I am a D.C. native. D.C. Okay. native. Yes. Okay. 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 Now, when you, you got called up to go to Afghanistan, and you were kind of in the middle of something, what were you kind of in the middle of? Well, I was running for D.C. Council at large Why last year. in the world were you doing that? Well, I... As growing, someone who has worked for the D.C. government, yeah. I have to ask. Well, that's part of the reason, I think. Growing up in D.C., I think we really need good leadership. There's a lot of problems in our city. Uh, there's a lot of issues with regard to poverty, people that are really needy in the city. And I think that folks in our government aren't really doing the necessary work to make things happen and make lives better for everybody, and that's why I was doing it. So you felt I really want to make a difference. Yeah, you want to make a yeah. difference, you felt cold. Were you running against uh, someone in particular? Uh, yes, I was actually running against Carol Schwartz. Okay. And she actually lost to the candidate that I endorsed, who was Michael Brown. Okay. And so you, you clearly have a call to service. If you're in the military and you've gone to Afghanistan, any sort of lessons that you've learned from your time in Afghanistan that you could bring to Washington? Because I feel like a little bit similarities in terms of crumbling infrastructure needs to be built up. What do you see that you could bring back to your hometown? Afghanistan is a very difficult situation. The country is extremely poor. There's a huge amount of poverty. Uh, there's a real lack of infrastructure, as you were saying, none. I mean, most of the country outside of Kabul is mud huts. Mm -hmm. uh, people earn about $120 a year. It's about the sixth poorest country in the world. Uh, but what I think we can learn is we're spending so much money there. Uh, $200 million a day, really trying to rebuild that country, rebuild the infrastructure. Uh, if you think about that, that's about one half, there are four days of the war in Afghanistan is about the entire district budget. And I think that if we spent money here focusing on our infrastructure, focusing on our poverty, we can really make a big difference. And I think really the results of infrastructure and investment can really be seen there. And I think we should do more of that here. Give me some exact details of what you would do. Because that's that sounds really good. This but I'm gonna hitting. hold you to task. I'm gonna yeah, hold you to task. Here. That's good. I want I want to hear two things. Two things that you would really do immediately. I think first of all we need to provide detailed. 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 Okay. I think we need to provide jobs for our citizens through increased infrastructure. The unemployment rate in DC is twelve percent and going up. Okay, so I'm a, I'm an unemployed district I'll get back to you. Uh, there's I'm an unemployed <laughs> district resident. Tell me where I should go to find those jobs. Well, DC.gov is a great place to start. It's a website that the DC government runs that really hosts uh, a variety of job opportunities. And DC Department of Employment Services as well offers job training. The problem I see is that it needs to be better funded with better resources, more partnership with the private sector to really ensure that we're placing people and giving people good opportunity. I don't see that happening right now. Okay. So what did you miss while you were gone? I mean, you were gone for a year, you were in Afghanistan, you're a DC native. I mean, were you just hankering after some Ben's Chili Bowl? I mean, what, what were you missing? <laughs> I really, most of all, it was, it was a lonely place, Afghanistan. I mean, it's, it's violent, it's very poor, and you know, you think back to D.C. and you think about your friends and you think about going out and your favorite restaurants, and you really miss that. I and mean, all those jobs on DC.gov that you could be applying for right now? <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> but, no, I, 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 I really, I missed a great deal. And I think most of all was just thinking about life going on as normal here in DC while we were at war over there. And I think that's really what I missed. But I was doing what I thought was a noble cause, and I really was happy that I was there. And I'm happy to be back. And it seems that your experiences have actually brought you a lot of perspective as to how you can, I mean, just following up with Sonia's question, how you're able to bring that back to DC. Do you have any plans in the future to run again? 
or perhaps to throw one of the, uh, the existing incumbents? Well, Went for mayor, maybe? <laughs> that is a one-person race at this point, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I think I've really grown up in D.C. really thinking about service and trying to help the people of the city in any way that I can. Whatever form that takes in the future, I don't know, but I know that I am going to commit myself to service here. And elected office is an option in the future that I'm considering. Although right now I just want to focus on reconnecting with friends, getting reinvolved back in the city, and really getting my life back because a year was a really long time to be away. Is there anything in particular that you're looking to do right away? I know you've only been back for seven days, so I know there's a lot of things you have to catch up on. Mail, jet lag. He's jet you know, lag, paying the bills. You, yeah, <laughs> magazines. So besides all that, is there anything that you in the immediate future that we can look, look to, uh, forward with you? Well, the, the D.C. social scene was something that I really missed, so I'd love to get out and about to the new restaurants, so many new places. Like dim sum. You, yeah. Like this one. Uh, you, you guys can probably sum. provide me with all the great new places that have opened in the last year that I've missed. I mean, before I left, we were I was going out to some great restaurants and clubs, but I'm sure there's some new ones now. So it is kind of like a little bit of a time warp. You leave D.C., you come back a year later, and you can really see how much the city has changed. People say that D.C. kind of, you know, hasn't really progressed, but you can really tell us it's been a year do you see a difference or not i really do and reading the doom and gloom in the press about the recession and what's happened all over the country it's really exciting to know the dc weather that pretty well because i've come back and i've seen new restaurants open i haven't seen a lot of places go out of business uh, the city seems to be doing relatively well unemployment is up but relative to the rest of the country we're doing well and it was exciting to see that uh, one thing I noticed was there's still a big parking lot outside the Renaissance Hotel here. I thought they were going to be digging ground on a hotel, but apparently that never happened. <laughs> well, see, there's all sorts of things going on one year to the next, and Adam's kind of been away from it and now can tell you just how much has happened in that year. And you're going to see your star tone, it sounds like. Yes, that's right. Yeah. He's the one with the good tan. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, and as always, thank you for joining us on this episode of The District Dish. Come back next time.